This is a story time about how I met Mira Forlan, but it's also kind of my own personal memorial to her. I think she was a great actress and a very good person. And she died this year. Mira Forlan was born on the 7th of September, 1955, in Zagreb, Yugoslavia. And she died at the age of 65 on the 20th of January, 2021. That was at the start of this year. Now, in the Wikipedia, they say that her nationality was Croatian. But when she was born, Yugoslavia was a federated country um, under a single leadership. And when the Balkans broke up, she got in trouble because while she was Croatian, uh, she was married to a Serbian. So she was a member of the Croatian National Theater in Zagreb, and she appeared in Yugoslav television and films. And she won a palm dole at the 1985 uh, Cannes Film Festival. And she was nominated for an Academy Award for Best Foreign Language Film. And in the late 1980s, she performed in theater productions in both Zagreb and Belgrade. And Here's what happened to her in her personal life. Her husband was a director. His name was uh, Goran uh, Gaij, uh, and he was an ethnic Serb. He directed her um, on a number of times, including one episode of Babylon 5, and in several plays, including a production of Sophocles and uh, Antigone. Um, so twice a month during the late 1980s, Furlan made a three-hour commute between Zagreb and Belgrade, where her husband was based, to act in theater productions in both cities. After the Croatian War of Independence in 1991, she was fired by the Croatian National Theater for refusing to quit acting in a Belgrade theater production. And then there was a public smear campaign against her and they turned her colleagues and friends against her and she received threatening messages. Um, she wrote a public letter expressing her deep disappointment of the behavior of her fellow citizens and colleagues and the threats of the nationals against her. And she and her husband left in November of 1991 with whatever belongings they could carry and moved to New York City. Now, I was not a gung-ho Babylon 5 fan when the show was still ongoing, but I was aware of it. It was a very good show. And Mira Furlan was excellent in the role of the Minbari ambassador, Delenn. Um, I simply had too much drama going on in my own life at the time to keep up with all of that completely. But I believe that Delenn had a child about the same time the Furlan gave birth to her only child, Marco Love, in 1998. But at this point, I was already in my uh, Lady of Kaifeng phase of my life, and my daughter 
uh, Sword was born in 1999. So Mira Furlan and I are five years apart in age, um, and her son is a year older than my daughter. And it just so happened that uh, when my daughter was in preschool and Bo was just very tiny, I decided that I wanted to attend a local convention just the way I used to when I lived in the United States. And I was now living in Missouri and there happened to be a convention, um, a two hour drive away from us. And so I took my kids, each of them had a car seat. Um, I took them in the car, nobody accompanied us, and I drove to the convention. And it was raining when we arrived. And I had to leave the kids in the car, in their car seats, so that I could go in and register uh, for the convention. And I was a little worried about leaving them there for a minute. And I was especially worried because there was somebody very tall right in front of me. Um, I was hoping I would get to the front desk first. Um, so I, I was a little impatient, but I just stood there. This very tall woman ahead of me was talking to the clerk. And when she turned around, I realized, oh my God, that looks like Ambassador Delenn. <laughs> it was Mira Furlan. And she was a guest at this convention. I hurried back to the car after I finished registering. And my two kids were like angels. Bo was in his seat. A sword was in hers. They weren't fighting. There wasn't any problem. They had waited for me very quietly. And they were so well behaved. And so we went up to our room. And... I did not know this at the time, but you weren't allowed to have a chimpanzee or any non-human primate in the city where we were attending the convention. There was an ordinance about that. And of course, how do you know these things? You don't even know until you get there. Um, and I didn't know it at the time at all. But actually, the staff of the hotel were so kind and so good. And they, instead of causing problems for us when they found out that Bo was a chimp, um, they actually uh, offered to accommodate us. They asked if there was anything special that he needed. So it was actually a very good experience for us attending this convention. And the weird thing about it is that Mira Furlan actually took time out of her schedule to come up to me um, and start talking to me about Bo. She was a very generous person. She was interested in other people's stories. Um, she noticed that Sword and I were, were speaking to each other in Hebrew and Sword was very shy, would not speak to anybody else. At the time, she she was attending a preschool. She did know English, but she was just not talking to people that she did not know at all. So that's called selective mutism. And we were, you know, we were dealing with that. And Mira Furlan said that she had a son a very similar age, but he was he was very um, easygoing and he liked to talk to everyone and he preferred English to the language that they spoke at home and you know what I don't remember what she called the language that they spoke at home this is one of those weird things where you know when I was uh, a young girl and learning about the world and even taking my first linguistics course I was told that Serbo-Croatian was the language spoken in Yugoslavia. Um, but later on, um, after the political situation changed, I was told, oh no, Serbian is one language and Croatian is another, and it wasn't nice uh, to 
you know, to treat them as if they were a single language. But here's the thing. These are mutually intelligible languages. And so if you're taking an approach uh, to language that says that the boundary between languages is intelligibility, if they're mutually intelligible, then they are dialects of the same language and not different languages. However, people in, in the world play hard and fast with that. You know, in China, they pretend that every a language cho uh, spoken by Chinese people is Chinese and it's just a dialect of one language. And the people who support Pan-Arabism uh, are the same way. If there is an Arabic type language spoken in a country, even if it's not mutually intelligible with another Arabic type language spoken in another country, they're all called Arabic and it's just a matter of dialect. But as soon as the political situation changes, it's different. So anyway, she told me that her son was uh, insisting on speaking English at home. And that was very different with, from my situation where even though Sword did know English, uh, we spoke Hebrew at home and at school, even though she understood people, she didn't want to talk to them or couldn't talk to them really. Um, but anyway, that is my really wonderful memory of meeting with Mira Furlan. It wasn't a convention uh, for science fiction. It wasn't a, a convention for Babylon 5. I think she was attending it because she was uh, sort of making publicity for her new show, Lost. Um, but most of the people at the convention were gamers. And I had very little in common with them, had not much to say to them. So really, Mira Furlan and one neighbor of mine who showed up at the convention were the only people who actually spoke to me. But the, the staff of the, um, the staff there was very nice to Bo, you know, and Bo was treated very well. And that is my memory of Mira Furlan. But I think it's interesting that after her death, the people who had organized the smear campaign against her and that were doing terrible things to her, um, those people finally apologized. And I wonder, you know, what is the point of an apology? after somebody dies. If you're going to apologize, wouldn't it make more sense to apologize while they're still alive and to make amends? I wonder how many people are planning to apologize to me after I die. Ira Furlan was a great actress, a brave, a noble person, and I enjoyed drawing her or painting her as the case may be. This is uh, an acrylic painting on paper. As you can see, I did it in my sketchbook and I, I think it does look like her. I think it does have her likeness the nobility of her character. Um, she had nice facial structure, nice bone structure. She was a tall, slim woman, and she had that look in her eye. Uh, very intelligent, uh, very easy to talk to. And I remember her with great affection and respect.